Hi, I'm Chris from Mirror Windows, and I am back once again with a plugin. And this is not really one of those ones that I like to say, oh, this is terrible, you shouldn't use it, this is garbage, blah, 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 which sometimes I'm on about that stuff because I have fairly high standards for the things that I make. This is kind of between uh, super awesome new stuff and older stuff that's maybe not all that impressive. It's a little thing called Chrome Oxide, and it's been kind of sought after. People have been asking for this one. So this is what I'm bringing this week. On top of uh, working on all kinds of other stuff, which I will show you or tell you about later. But for the time being, as you can see, um, new visuals. I'm continually trying to get that better as well. But uh, Let's ignore that for the moment and go and look at what chrome oxide looks and sounds like. Now, I was also going to record um, more tracks, but instead I just muted the guitar. So this is the uh, same thing I've been using, but just the rhythm section, because chrome oxide um, is kind of like a tape emulation. But well, here, I might as well just show you. This is no chrome oxide, and if I turn it on, it's going to soften stuff a little bit. And if I turn it up, we're getting a really grungy sound. Clean to super grunged out. Now here's what's happening. Chrome Oxide is doing some saturation, but not all that much. But what it's really doing is this intensity thing is manipulating a kind of flutter effect across about five samples. And that's what the bias control does as well, because this is a multi-band tape emulation, which is very unusual for me. This, there's a reason I didn't keep pursuing this is because I, I followed other paths with that kind of stuff. But this one's using some unusual tricks, so it doesn't sound like my other uh, tape emulations. And what the bias does here is we're doing the slightly saturated lows and no head bump on this one. And then the highs are getting kind of diffracted by this random fluttery, noisy kind of thing going on that really breaks up highs quite aggressively because one of the things from the very earliest forms of chrome oxide is if you have a random source that's effectively frequency modulating your audio, it's going to interfere with highs a lot harder than it's going to interfere with lows because lows change uh, amplitude much more slowly. So if you're jittering back and forth between a tiny area on a, a low frequency sign, that not that much is going to happen. But if you're jittering back and forth between a big high frequency thing that's going on, it's going to blow everything up really severely. And chrome oxide also um, averages to some extent. It's doing an interpolation on the random thing. So let's go back here. And not only that, let's shut off some of these interstages in here, which are removing highs. So we have a brighter output on this like bass and drums and stuff. Let's hear that. So this is more like your straight and daw result. And that's pretty bright. If intensity is at zero, it's not really doing anything. But, You can hear that even just turning bias without any of the randomness, that's darkening things. I can hear it in the extreme highs that it's darkening them. And of course, if I throw intensity on, you can plainly hear a noise coming in, and that's the randomness.
and then the bias is going to take that, the uh, noisy aspect, and darken that. So what we end up getting is a different form of tape emulation that's not what I ended up gravitating towards with the more serious work in that area. And what it does is it lets you dial in a sort of a certain kind of fuzz that's not really a flutter, but it's kind of like flutter and it's applied only to the highs. And you're also getting to delay the highs relative to the lows, which acts kind of like I don't know the activity of transformers, which a tape head is a transformer. And if you're using a tape recording, you're going to have at least two of them in there, one to record with and one to play back with. So this is a alternate approach to tape simulation from back in the day. And it's one that I didn't really pursue, but it might find uses, particularly if you're like, let's, let's say you're pursuing some kind of thing where you want to take stuff in more of a, I don't know, boards of Canada direction or whatever, your mulch core kind of stuff where everything needs to be kind of grungy and such. Well, if you need to do that, we can go from playing here and then adjust both of these things by turning them on first. Too much noise, a little less noise, but a little more bias. And there you have a sort of old school effect that's not exaggerated. Like you can live with that one, even in pretty serious like audiophile circles or whatever, it's not obliterating things, but it is giving that old school quality. If we turn it off, all of a sudden we're in digital clarity again. We turn it back on. And of course we can mulch things out completely by just cranking it. You can hear it's really wiping stuff out. Or we can try to make it as bright as possible under bias and then have all of the noise in there. You know, your taste is going to have to be the judge there. But um, that's essentially what I got there for you. Chrome Oxide is out and that's how it works. And I hope you like it. It is maybe not what I was pursuing as far as, you know, the tape emulation type stuff that I normally like to do because the sort of grunge quality of it is not really what I'm seeking out of analog. What I seek out of analog is sonority, lack of aliasing, which brings me to some of the stuff I've been doing, but I have been posting about that, so that's not a big mystery. Um, suffice it to say that uh, this track that I've been fooling with, with the guitars and bass and all that kind of stuff on it, um, the synthesizers in there leave a lot to be desired compared with what I'm working with now. I've essentially done some work on the uh, Music Thing Modular chord organ, which is a little teensy-based uh, Eurorack module in my rack back there. And if you haven't been following that stuff because you're not interested in Eurorack modules, there's neat things to be discovered there. For instance, in the video that I made, I've established pretty conclusively that if you're running a really primitive digital synthesizer at 44.1K and you have the chance to up its sampling rate to 340K, you actually gain a lot. It's got nothing to do 
with uh, being able to hear 340K as a frequency, but it's got everything to do with digital produces aliasing and quantization constantly. And if you jack it to 340K, the aliasing just about goes away, even with these very primitive things. So that's a reason for using higher sample rates, even if you don't believe you can hear supersonics, which you can't, but you sure can hear the aliasing tones because they come right through into the audio range. You can hear what aliasing does on a bass note. It's that obvious. And another interesting thing about that is the uh, chord organ, that's just 12 bits. That's, that's not high resolution, but the high sample rate makes it sound better because the transitions between bits, if you're just generating waveforms, that's a harmonically related distortion. It's a essentially a really, really high overtone on top of what you're already doing. And the, the bit depth is just making like stair steps on your waveforms and stuff. But since they're harmonically related to what the frequency of the note is, you jack up the uh, sampling rate that high and that starts sounding good too. And you can play multiple notes against each other and they mesh nicely. I discovered that fooling with the um, wavetable stuff that it has, which I didn't like before because it generated very high overtones and the aliasing became a complete nightmare. Solve that, suddenly it sounds amazing. So yeah, there's a lot to be learned. Look, here's another thing that I've been working with and this is uh, the chord chart from my chord organ. As you can see, when I do these, I have to draw them up on uh, paper, and the red means it's an easily reachable guitar chord. And this is basically my research into music uh, composition, where it's like, can I come up with a theory for what are the good sounding guitar chords that go against each other? And these are along a circle of fifths, and vertically, I went back to or I, I went to, because I hadn't tried it before, straight up semitones, which also go along with all of these different keys that you could be in. And it's producing some pretty cool results. So if anybody wants to talk about that stuff, you can ask me questions on Monday, because I'll be doing the question and answer session as usual on Monday. And uh, Places that you can ask me questions, you might want to avoid asking me questions on like Facebook because what you might not know, and I'm, I'll tell you this because in case you do this kind of thing, here's what not to do. Um, I got banned off of Facebook briefly, and it's not for saying terrible things about politics or guns or women or who knows what. It's simply because I had been I think it's simply because I had been posting uh, multiple copies of some of those live streams, including like the one from tomorrow. I've been doing stuff like posting that both to my personal Facebook and to the Air Windows AU plugins page. And before you know it, my personal Facebook was dead as a doorknob. It was gone. You couldn't connect to it. I was banned. I had been a bad, bad boy. So basically, I went, okay, uh, I'll just not do that anymore. And they put it back and I'm probably going to stay out of trouble, but there's a word to the wise there. Uh, if you're trying to do that kind of thing, maybe don't do that. So if you need to hear what I'm doing by following on Facebook, I strongly recommend don't be trying to do that because I really can't be posting too much to a thing like that. What I'll be doing is I bounce a lot of stuff to Twitter and I'm on YouTube and so on. Like, share, and subscribe, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And mostly I'll just be continuing to do my stuff. And they can't stop the signal. And it, I'm joking. They weren't trying to stop the signal. They just thought I was spamming. But uh, I guess I'll see you folks. To, oh, I almost forgot. Patreon's doing super well. Like I'll be doing these streams for like an hour and 47 minutes. Some of that might not be real. Occasionally I get these really 
big Patreon supporters, and you never can tell when those are real and when those turn out to be just somebody that will vanish as soon as you try to build their card. But uh, I always re I always rely on, firstly, you know, all the little ones added up together is what gives you the statistical certainty of nothing is going to blow up on you too hardcore. If most people can just kick in a buck, then statistically not too many of them will run away at once. And secondly, I don't care if you do. If you need to take care of yourself, I've said it a billion times, you totally should. I'm fine. The Patreon is doing fine. It's like doing super fine. So if you need to bail off of my Patreon in order to take care of your own needs, I want you to do that and you should. Obviously, I'm like, look at, look at my wonderful rig and how well things are going. I'd like to think that I turn all of this stuff into wonderful things, which I then share, because that's what I do. But don't feel that I'm in terrible trouble or anything like that, except with Facebook, apparently. And I promise I'll be nicer to them and not post links to videos to more than one page or whatever it is that it, whatever it is that annoyed them. And... Uh, on that note, I should go and make my tacos and have my dinner because I've been putting that off doing this video. And I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.